Hello, uh, my name is Wells Dunbar. I'm online editor here at KUT uh, News, KUT.org and KUT 90.5 FM. Prior to that, I was the City Beat reporter and columnist at the Austin Chronicle. And I held that job for about seven and a half years. And the majority of that time was spent down at City Hall uh, watching the uh, the antics of our Austin City Council. And so that's why I'm here speaking with you today about local government. We're going to talk essentially about uh, the types of stories uh, you can report on from City Hall, some sort of best practices for, for doing that, uh, ways to get story ideas and stuff like that. So we'll just get to it. So uh, laid out in front of you, here's a couple different types of uh, government and local government coverage. I'm going to uh, sort of breeze through these because I think we'll, we'll be talking about them more in depth, uh, each piece by piece. There's uh, the sort of record story, what happened. There's the analysis story, which I guess you could maybe sort of say is why it happened that way. The somebody screwed up and the system is screwed up story. With, you could both sort of say fall into the field of accountability journalism, of trying to sort of get to uh, the actions behind any sort of instance. And then the issue story, sort of taking a broader look at uh, the issues that are at play in a situation. So here's one example I reported on the record story. This is a story I reported going to the final meeting of Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission. Uh, that was the citizens group that uh, was uh, had volunteered and was selected to uh, draw district maps for Austin City Council. Uh, prior to that, for all of uh, you know, basically modern history here in Austin, all of our council members have been elected at large, just like the mayor is, running citywide. So that's coming to an end, and it's a pretty historic occasion, local government and local politics. You know, essentially we want to have the record story. We were there, and so that's what this story was. Stories like this kind of, we went to the meeting, here's what happened, here's what's coming next. That's essentially the bread and butter of government reporting. Meetings like this always have lots of records. Uh, lots uh, and uh, city council meetings have long, long agendas. I don't think you're going to find a council agenda for the most part here in Austin that's under uh, three digits. There's lots of stuff you can pull from these sort of stories when you do these record stories. Next example, the analysis story. This is digging into records and maybe going a little deeper than that sort of you know surface. Uh, but very important type of record story. The example here we had on our website, uh, Austin Charges ACL, the Austin City Limits Festival, $53,000 Chicago has Lollapalooza, put on by the same company, uh, C3 Presents, pay close to 28 times that. And so essentially what happened here is we got these public records and analyzed them, did a little compare and contrast, and you can do a, a similar thing uh, that's one effective way to look at things, maybe compare similar deals between cities or compare you know, similar contracts the city may have for uh, services. Maybe one provider is charging a lot more than another provider for the same services. I think we've uh, seen some reporting on about local trash hauling, essentially, recycling and trash services. So I guess one important point to hammer on, on this analysis story is that both of these records were public records. So we requested the contract from the city of Austin with ACL, and co-reporter on this story, Tyler Pratt, went to the city of Chicago and requested that contract from them. And so public information requests are basically golden when it comes to doing these sort of analysis stories. I'm sure you've talked about that some more, but here's just a, here's a sort of example of that in practice. Okay, somebody screwed up. <laughs> it's a pretty a striking example of that happening. Fort Worth homeowner or couple having their house demolished by accident. And in the next slide, the system is screwed up. So I think you could say maybe the, the former one, the somebody screwed up, that's more of a one-off story, I would think, whereas the system is screwed up. That's more of a systemic undertaking, I would think, here. And so the story here, uh, more than 100,000 Austin energy customers hit by billing errors. So obviously, this is a story that took a little time to report and suss out to get all that information. And so that does go to that sort of systemic reporting issue. It's like, so, so here's what we found it's more than just one person. And that's when you can sort of get into that kind of advocacy journalism role. Maybe not expressing for like any particular side, but essentially expressing on the side of, you know, we need more transparency. We need to get this problem solved. Uh, we've identified a problem. 
Uh, we've noted what's wrong in this situation. And so by r- reporting on this and raising these issues, I think most oftentimes uh, when a paper like this, like the Statesman or any news organization reports on something to that extent, they're very happy to see it be resolved. The system is screwed up. I think oftentimes we do want to see some sort of outcome from from that reporting. And finally, the issues story. Here's uh, one of the uh, KUT.org stories, Austin Urban Rail and Seven Maps. This is essentially an overview of a topic that lots of people have talked about and has been hotly debated here in Austin for years, decades, really. Essentially, what's going on is that it looks like Austin's going to put another urban rail initiative on the ballot. There was one that was uh, put up in 2000. And that failed narrowly. And so ever since then, the sort of question is bubbled to the surface. When will we have another urban rail election? Should we? Is urban rail the way to go? So there's been a lot of sort of competing proposals, competing ideas on on how urban rail should work, the areas it should serve. And that's still playing out. None of that is entirely settled. And so from that, we were able to take several other maps and sort of get into those disagreements and controversies over where should the line go, what's the most effective route for urban rail, and all that sort of stuff in a sort of fun context here with uh, basically with the maps and, and writing long descriptions of the important aspects therein. What makes this an issue story is that it doesn't really have, it maybe in, instead of having one major thrust, uh, like some of the previous examples we've seen, this sort of takes a topic and just explores it from a myriad of different angles. And so In that instance, it was a success. I don't mind saying so. Pat myself on the back there. That was a joke, y'all. I'm sorry. So coverage tips. Here's a bunch of discreet tips for covering uh, local government meetings, whether they be city halls, boards and commissions. Uh, Austin has a very robust boards and commissions uh, system with several dozen boards and commissions on everything from zoning and platting to human rights to uh, commission on women. But these are all pretty much apply across the board. One thing is to start your reporting before the meeting, especially if it's something before the city council. Especially if it's something before the city council, the issue will have been vetted and debated and discussed probably a good, good amount before it gets to the uh, council chambers. That's pretty much a guarantee. If it's something controversial, uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion on that topic already. And so by starting your reporting before the meeting, you'll have that background to help inform your readers on you know, why this matters, why is this important. Speaking of the agenda, I think I mentioned earlier, those council agendas are long and heady beasts, and oftentimes they're over 100 items. So get familiar with the agenda. Scan it, see if there's any sort of hot-button topics that you know will be of interest. Uh, similarly, research the issues and maybe have a sort of a list of contacts of people in mind you could talk to. Say, so if this issue, if this, just to take an example, if this uh, rezoning of this house in this old Austin neighborhood is going to be controversial, well, maybe I should look and find out who the leader of the neighborhood association is over there because he's probably going to have dozens of people out there protesting this zoning change that the council is posed to approve. If this is a regular beat, read the file and clips, etc. Uh, so that includes obviously the local news sources, the Statesman, KUT, pretty much any other media outlet, but also think about maybe some of the smaller media outlets or more of the specialty publications out there, groups like the uh, Austin Business Journal. There's a subscription service called In Fact Daily, but they make some of their uh, material available for free, and, and that applies really across the country. Uh, Most major cities are going to have a sort of business journal or or, or these niche publications that you can look at. And and oftentimes they're looking at at the agenda just from that sort of niche perspective, so you could find some interesting things you might not pay attention to other, otherwise. Maybe the most important thing on here, write your B copy before the meeting so you can plug in quotes, color, and votes during the meeting. That's essentially the story so far, and that applies to most any reporting, quite honestly. Take all your previous reporting or, or take just the knowledge you've amassed on the subject and start writing that up because you don't know how the council's going to vote, or maybe you do, but you don't want to predict anything. Think about you know what the body of your uh, article or blog is going to look like. So you can say, you know, maybe leave those first two paragraphs blank, but then you can get into the sort of meat and potatoes of the issue was raised last summer when Joe Taxpayer 
approached his council member, yada, 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 you get the idea of having that sort of information at your disposal. So that way, if it's big breaking news, it's not a scramble to put the whole thing together because you've got the bulk of it already. And that works with, like I said, tons of other reporting uh, possibilities. When we were reporting, I think, on some Supreme Court decisions that would impact Texas, like affirmative action here at at UT, we had a lot of that background written up already. So when the news broke, we could uh, bring it to people quickly. Uh, Arrive early and ask the council members or board members uh, if you can talk with them after the meeting. That's a good thing to press the flesh, essentially. Put yourself in front of these people uh, so that when you approach them later, they'll know who you are. Arrange to talk to audience members about uh, any issue they are there to talk about and you're there to cover. Most council items and uh, board commission items allow for public testimony, so that's a good way to gauge people's, uh, you know, where they stand on a, on a subject, obviously. So if it's something you're reporting on and a person makes a particularly impassioned case or particularly knowledgeable about uh, the topic at hand, that's a good tip-off to go and approach them, introduce yourself, speak to them for your article. And, of course, get their name and contact info. Um, want to make sure all that stuff is correct. So here's a little... I guess nuts and bolts advice on uh, just writing the actual pieces up, the lead and the focus. I'm an editor, and one of the things I really hate to see is some unwieldy run-on sentence uh, beginning the article, something like, by a 5-2 to two vote, council members Kathy Tovo and Laura Morrison abstaining, the Austin City Council decided to form a exploratory committee on the subject of, you get the idea. It would be better to say... The Austin City Council has decided to postpone action on topic XYZ. And then in your second sentence, you can bring in all that sort of detail. Especially if we're talking about something that could be arcane here in the example before you. We're talking about the city budget, which I think, you know, somewhere over $3 billion. There's a lot of stuff in there and can get very wonky very quickly. We don't want to scare anyone off by, you know, front-loading the article with every conceivable thing we know. We want to sort of lure the reader in. So, for example, talking about, yes, public safety. A huge chunk of the general fund, that's not the entire budget. Oh, I'm already wonking out here. But comprising a huge part of the general fund, which isn't the entire city budget, but the portion of it that pays for services like police, parks, fire, EMS, libraries, it's all the sort of city services you use and receive. So looking at this story on public safety, which is a big issue every budget cycle, we don't want to get into, you know, facts and figures and the sorts of things that are going to scare any readers off there at the beginning. We want to sort of set it up partially to define, you know, what is it important about and and why should you care and why should you read this story there in the beginning? And then we can get into the weeds a little bit further. So we sort of set it up. Public safety takes the most chunk of money from this specific pot of funds for city services. Today, the council is looking at if we're getting the bang for our buck, if we're getting a return on investment, then you can sort of lead the reader through the story instead of hitting them with a whole lot of detail at once. We see another example there at the, the second story. Austin traffic can be awful. Okay, yeah, I, I get that. I've been in traffic. It stinks. Go down a paragraph, and now we're talking about something maybe we haven't heard of, this sort of unique proposal to bury part of I-35, reconnect the east and west uh, portions of downtown, and uh, create more capacity on the interstate. So, you know, that's pretty crazy, but maybe if you tried to if you tried to put all that in the in your lead sentence, that uh, would probably be too much to grapple with. Going back to different story types, here's uh, another story type, the advanced story. This is essentially setting up what's going to happen at uh, a meeting that day. It's good for a bunch of sort of quick hits. Maybe these are topics that are that are interesting, but uh, you don't deserve as much attention. Maybe uh, it's just a question of resources and some interesting stuff, but you just don't have the time to hone in on it. And also owing to the nature of many of these local government meetings with their uh, with the council and its 100-item agendas, uh, there's not a way you can touch on everything, but there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. So here's an example of just a few of the things that came before the council that day. And its cousin, here the wrap-up story, sort of, uh, I view this as a way to kind of update what we saw there with the update the advance story. I'm the online editor, and here at KUT we're a radio station, but we also have a robust online web 
component. And so these stories you've seen from from us are stories on our website. Oftentimes we will update something like that initial story, the setup story, the here's what's happening at council today with uh, one of these sort of wrap-ups you're seeing right here, touching on just all the different things the council had to do that day, things like a special events ordinance, changes to Austin water rates, Asian American quality of life, all these sort of things that impact people's lives and are interesting but, but are fighting for attention among all the other things that are there. And so... And like I said, it's a good way to sort of bring it full circle, update things you were working on previously. Touching on what I just said a moment ago about what's relevant to people's lives, that, that's really a good way to look at what's deserving of your attention and your resources when it comes to covering City Hall, because there are tons and tons of things you can do. Here's a good bullet list, essentially, of what's going to attract people's attention, what's going to really speak to people's lives and make an impact in their lives, because those are the sorts of stories that uh, primarily I think you should be covering. For example, here, utility costs. That's been a huge issue here in Austin. Uh, obviously, just the cost of living in Austin is a uh, huge issue and sort of goes to these core Austin issues of identity and, and Austin's uh, changing demographics, changing identity, essentially. So something like a hike in utility costs, you know, that raises questions beyond just what's on the surface there that sort of gets into these questions of, well, is Austin going to be the same sort of place that it was when I moved here? Is Austin going to be affordable for me and my children? Similar with property tax increases. And that's a sort of annual thing because the city creates a city budget each year to set that property tax rate and spend it, essentially. So you know you're going to be dealing with that each year, and that's a good example of a story you can do a lot of pre-reporting on. Noise ordinances and smoking bans, obviously an issue in a city like Austin that prides itself on its uh, live music and uh, tourism related to that. Voting rules, I would add park rules to that. Anything that people are getting out and enjoying and utilizing a lot is going to be very is going to be very controversial, uh, especially if there's some sort of you know change that not everyone's on board with. One example there is. Um I believe there are some proposed changes to auditorium shores along Ladybird Lake there. Part of it would restrict part of the park to dogs. And so we did a story about, about that, and it just blew up. People were sharing all sorts of comments. How dare they close part of the, part, part of the park off to dogs? Anything like that that really hits people where they live and with their issues is going to be, you know, relevant to them and relevant to your readers. You know, I think probably the best rule of thumb for this is what are people talking about online? What are your friends talking about on Facebook? I'm sure many of you are familiar with Reddit. Uh, the Austin Reddit page is very robust. It has uh, lots of conversation, lots of links on there. And so if something is generating a lot of discussion on the Austin Reddit or whatever city you go off to, if it's a bigger city, it probably has a pretty well-trafficked uh, uh, Reddit as well. If they're talking about that on there, if it's generating a lot of conversation, you know it's going to generate a lot of conversation when you report on it and add that more, and add more context to it. Uh, essentially, my rule of thumb is if your friends are talking about it, if you and your friends are talking about it, then it's going to be relevant to other people too, and it might be that might be a good sign that you should dedicate the resources to reporting on it. Quickly, some of the components of reporting here. What's the current situation? I call this the sort of background. Uh, what's being proposed? It's very important to make sure you have this sort of stuff right uh, because the city council is tackle some pretty complicated issues, things like uh, short-term rental registrations or, or rental re or, uh, registration programs for apartment renters in specific areas of the city. Proposals that have a lot of moving parts and can be changed on uh, the city council dais uh, through amendments. So it's very important to make sure you have the proposal and what actually passed correct because they can get kind of convoluted. What do we need to change? What's at issue? Who stands to win or lose? The players is... I like to call it. Uh, has it happened before? Is it happening elsewhere? How are other places dealing with similar issues? That's all what I like to think of as the context of a story. And I think that's really one of the most important services 
uh, news can provide is sort of placing stories into context so it's not just some sort of one-off story that we all focus on one day and then kind of forget about. It's by placing it into context we can really see the sort of relevance it has in people's lives. What happens next? That's a very big question at uh, City Hall because so many things are incremental. They'll take, you know, they'll address part of part of a resolution one week and or, or refer it back or, you know, take in the uh, taking a suggestion from a border commission. So, so you have to make sure that, okay, was this actually the final action or are they directing the city manager to look into the study, to look into the issue further and study it some more? Those are all things to be very uh, cognizant of. More questions to answer. And, and I think you can look at all of these. Who's proposing the change? Who's supporting it? Uh, why do they support it? I think these are all, you can all sort of think of these about being symptomatic of broader issues. Like I was saying earlier, maybe um, there's some anxi- anxiety over different or rising utility rates. And so, yeah, on, on the surface, you've got the story that, oh, well, we're going to be paying you know, $20 more in electric rates each month. And that's important, but really what is the context and what is the uh, impetus behind that that is really driving the outrage and conversation? And oftentimes it's something that's you're going to be symptomatic of a broader issue, like is the cost of living in Austin uh, rising exponentially and making it unaffordable to live? Or have changes to Austin sort of robbed it of its character that made it a special place in in the first place. So think about all these sort of questions on one level as the sort of nuts and bolts reporting issue is, you know, ways to get sources, ways to further the story, but also think about them in the broader context. And lastly, we have a meeting checklist here. Uh, Good things to look for at any sort of meeting. Up there at the top, what happened, the vote tallies, uh, public hearings, One good trick is to talk to the city clerk Uh, here at City Hall. She sits right by the council dais, and she's the one that keeps track of things like speakers. So, for instance, there is recently a big conversation about urban farms and and whether or not urban farms should be allowed in uh, areas of across the city, but essentially in East Austin, uh, whether or not that should remain a use on land that's usually just zoned for homes. Controversial issue drew out tons of people. I think they restricted the testimony to only about 30 minutes on either side. But you could still talk to the city clerk and she would tell you something like, oh, well, 800 people signed up. Obviously, that's an exaggeration. But she'll have those figures on how many people signed up, how many hours of testimony could be expected, that sort of thing. And numbers like that really sort of, you know, add a sense of, of heft to any sort of story you're reporting on at City Hall. All right. Well... That's it. I hope you enjoyed our chat today. Again, my name is Wells Dunbar. I'm with KUT 90.5 FM, KUT.org. And I hope uh, this proved helpful in your reporting going forward. Thanks a whole lot. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak to you, and good luck. <laughs>